Hello and welcome back to Sunday Breakfast. It's good to have you with us. Uh, this week I'm just going to chat um, on something that leading on from both Latifa and Beth's last videos. So two weeks ago Latifa did a video about how um, we should be the light on a hill and um, a light in the darkness um, for Jesus and that Jesus can shine through us. And then uh, last week Beth did a video on blooming where we are planted. And I just wanted to um, to sort of talk to you today about how you can be this light um, f through Jesus, that you can be this light in a dark place um, for Jesus, and that you can also bloom where you're planted. Um, I've had a lot of conversations over this lockdown in um, particular about how, um, with some people who have said things like, um, you know, it's great that God uses people, but you know, he could never do that with me. Like he couldn't use me. I'm not that sort of person who God could use or, it's, it's great that like, that you read all of these stories in the Bible, but like, they're just stories in the Bible and like, that, that would never happen now. How many times have you personally discounted yourself from being used by God because you don't think that you're enough for it? Or how many times have you said things like, oh, God, like, I don't know God well enough yet. Like, I haven't read my Bible from the start to the end, so God can't use me. Or things like, you know, like, yeah, like I said at the beginning, like God can use everybody else and that's for everybody else. Like that, that's the plan for everybody else, but that's not the plan for me. That's not what God's going to do with me. Um, or maybe that you're thinking like, oh, well, God doesn't know me well enough because if he knew me, if he knew all of my mess, if he knew all of my mistakes, he would definitely not use me. He would, he would fully discount me and be like, no, I'm going to find somebody else. And if you feel like this, if you have these thoughts, if you have these questions, you are not alone in questioning these. Um, I want you to just spend a little time, a little bit of time now thinking what is stopping you from having the confidence to know that God is going to use you? What is it that you are questioning? What is it that that, that question that goes on and on, 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 on and on and on in your head, what is it for you? Maybe write it down or maybe just think about it for a minute. Like what is it that is stopping you from having the confidence to know that God is going to use you for his will? In Philippians chapter one, verse six, it says, he who has started the good work in you will carry it on to completion. God has already started a good work in you. That's a fact. Like there's, you can't, you can't deny that. Like God has started a good work in you and he will carry it on to completion. He will carry it on because he's already started it in you. He's already working in you. He's already working through you. Whether you can see it or not, whether you can feel it or not, he is there and he is working through you and he has started it so he will finish it. That is a fact. God is already using you. Now, how many of you have um, been reading the Bible, reading through the Bible and being like, oh, wow, aren't they such great biblical heroes throughout the Bible that we see? And isn't that amazing that God could use those because they were such heroes and they were so perfect and like God just worked through them and it was all fine and it was all great. And like, I wonder how many people, how many of you guys read the Bible like that? I mean, I know I do like wishing that I was a hero that I could work through. Um, however, like God works through all of these heroes. I know that that's how I view um a lot of the time but let me just let you into a secret that god nobody that god uses in the bible is perfect not one of them not one of the people that god uses throughout the whole of the bible is perfect other than jesus and god but that's just a given and we just like they are perfect but nobody that god uses is perfect i'm just going to read you something that um goes through the bible characters and sort of their flaws um and it just really struck me and it really stuck with me that actually like these are biblical heroes. These are people that we look at all the time and think, oh my goodness, they were so great. But actually they weren't. It says Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses had a stutter. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Isaiah preached naked. Joseph, no, sorry, Jonah, Jonah ran away from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. John the, pa John the Baptist, John the Baptist <laughs> ate bugs. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep whilst praying. Martha worried about everything. The Samaritan woman was divorced more than once. 
Zacharias was too small. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer and Lazarus was dead. All of these people had all of their flaws and you still think that God can't use you. And you still think that you are discounted from being used by God. Well, friends, let me let you into a little secret. Like, that is not the case. God is gonna use you, God is gonna use you and he's gonna work through you. Um, and I'm here to remove that lie from your life that says that you aren't good enough for that. God wants to and loves using his people. He, he knows our brokenness, he knows our flaws, he knows that we're not perfect, he knows everything about us. And yet he invites us into his plan and he invites us even though we are broken, even though we are messy, he uses that. You are a child of the king. That's who you are, that is your identity. You can't deny that, that's another fact from this. Like you are um, a child of the king, that is who you are. Um, and God loves to work through his children. There's a little quote that says, God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. Um, and yes, you might feel like you're unequipped for whatever God is gonna do through you. Yes, you might feel like um, you're not ready for that, um, but God doesn't care. <laughs> God doesn't care that you feel like you're not ready because the truth is you aren't ready. The truth is that you, you aren't equipped for what God is gonna do, but he doesn't call you because you're equipped. He equips you through your calling. It might be that you feel like you aren't equipped to go and tell your friends or your family about Jesus and about um, how much he loves them. Or maybe it's that you feel like you aren't equipped to go and help the homeless man that lives down your road, um, that you walk past on, a daily, on the daily basis. Or maybe a neighbor who you know is struggling, you don't feel equipped to go and offer them some support or some care. Um, maybe it's that your friends are struggling with uh, mental health, um, with their mental health, and that you feel like you aren't equipped enough to help them or to support them. Or it might even be that you have been really affected or really challenged by a, like a movement like the Black Lives Matter movement, and you feel like you wanna do something about it, you wanna be an activist in this area, but you feel like your voice isn't important enough to be heard. God works through every single one of these things. Like that is exactly what he loves to work through. Um, and he knows that you're not ready yet. He knows that. But like I said at the beginning, he doesn't care. He doesn't care that you're not ready. Um, he is gonna equip you through whatever you are doing. He is gonna equip you in whatever he has called you to do. Have you ever um, been really upset by something that you've maybe seen on the news or you've heard about through school or an issue um, that you know is affecting everyone, like a pandemic, like, co like COVID? Um, have you ever had that thing that it just sits heavy on your heart and you're like, oh, I don't feel comfortable about this. I don't feel comfortable that there are people living in poverty. I don't feel comfortable that there are children that go without meals when they're not at school. I don't feel comfortable that there, um, are people who, because of um, a racial difference, are being discriminated against. Do you have that thing that sits heavy on your heart? And if you do, why don't you ask God what he wants you to do about it? Why don't you ask God what he wants you um, to do through it? Like, what he can do in this situation and how he can use you through that situation. God has put that thing on your heart for you to, for you to learn about and for you to know about and for you to work in it. And that is one of the things that he wants you to do. Now, we all know the New Testament. We all know that through the New Testament, we see Jesus do some crazy, crazy things. He like makes blind people see, he makes lame people walk, he like raises people from the dead. Like he does some crazy things and we can read all about it through the gospel. He even walks on water, like crazy. Um, but I wonder how many of you actually knew, actually know that the book of Acts, which comes just after the gospels is full of the disciples doing the exact same things that Jesus has done. So in Acts, we see the disciples make blind people see. We see the disciples, um, people who haven't walked in years or who are bed bound, we see them raised um, and walking around. And actually in Acts, we even see one of the disciples raise a, a dead woman, like to raise them up. Like these people are normal people. They're normal everyday people like you and me. And they were able to do the things that Jesus did because Jesus sent them his Holy Spirit. And that's what they were able to do. Like, and actually Acts is such an amazing book because it shows that we are able to do that today. Like we have that power. God still uses 
normal, messy people to do his miracles. And I love that, I just love that. Now personally, I have never felt equipped um, to be used by God, like never. Not once have I been like, oh yeah, God, like I'm so perfect, I've got everything together, you can use me however you want, like it's gonna be great, I'm so equipped, I'm so ready for this. Like not once have I said that. Normally the conversation goes the opposite way and I'm like, God, are you, are you sure you mean me? Like, you know, you know my mess, right? You know that I can't do this on my own. You know that I like mess up every single day, right? Are you, do you, do you still mean me? Like that's normally how the conversation goes. Um, but the difference is that actually, and that, and it's been a journey and it's not something that has been easy for me to discover, but actually the difference is that now I know who, I know my identity in God and I know that my mess and my brokenness and when I, when I mess up on the daily and because I'm not perfect, I know that I have the confidence um, to say that God's gonna use me anyway. And that confidence is God given, God given confidence for God to use me in whatever way he wants to. Um, and that is something that you can have as well. That is something that you can do. Um, and actually I want to challenge you right now um, that you, you can also have the confidence to know that God is gonna use you. You can have that confidence. That is something that God, like he, I can't even emphasize enough how much he loves to use his people to do his work. And the best thing is that he doesn't even need to, like he doesn't need us to do anything. Like he's God, he's greater than any, any one of us and he doesn't need us to be part of his plan. But we serve a God of relationship and we serve a God who wants to have us involved. He wants us to be there. Isn't that amazing that like actually God doesn't need us, but he wants us and he wants to use us. I just want you to let that sink in for a minute, that he wants to use you. He loves it. He loves it. He loves using your mess. He loves using your brokenness and he wants to use you. And you can have the confidence to know that and you can have the confidence to believe that. Um, and actually like, I just, I just challenge you today that if that's, um, that confidence is something that you want, if that is something that you want to have, that you are able to every single day be like, God, how are you gonna use me today? And know that he is gonna use you because that is exactly what he wants to do. Um, then I'm just gonna pray a prayer and I invite you to um, pray along with me. Um, and if like pray it out loud, pray it in your head, whatever you wanna do. But I just invite you to pray this prayer with me. And um, just invite God in to uh, give you the confidence to know that he's gonna use you. God, I want to be part of your plan. God, I know you use messy people. I know you use messy people like me. And I invite you to do whatever you want to do through me, knowing that you will give me everything I need and knowing that you are gonna be there every single step of the way. In your name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, then come and let us know. Come and chat to us, whether that's um, telling your mentor or whether that is telling one of the leaders in our in our youth Zooms that we have. Um, let us know, we would love to continue praying for you. We would love to hear what great things God is doing through you. And actually we would love to hear that heavy thing that sits on your heart and see what we can do about it together. That's amazing that actually, when we put our heads together, when we, when we put our brains together, like God can work through that. So if there is something that is heavy on your heart, if there is something that you're like, oh, I think God wants me to do something about this, but I don't really know. Like, come and let us know. Like, we would love to um, be able to help you figure that out. And also, if um, you prayed that prayer and you wanted to tell a mentor, but you don't have a mentor, then sign up. We would love to mentor you. We would love to um, get to know you a bit better and be able to, um, help you strengthen your relationship with God because that is what we love to see and we love to do. Um, so yeah, if you haven't got a mentor, then get in touch and get one. If you've prayed the prayer, let us know. Um, and know from this and know for the rest of the day, for the year, forever, that God loves you, that God sees your brokenness, he sees your mess and he's like, yeah, I wanna use you, I wanna use you anyway. Um, and know that and know that he loves you and he loves to use you. And I hope you have a great week um, and I will speak to you soon. Bye.